Good afternoon. There is a danger that I will have taken the instructions for this session too literally. Um, I, I have the letter, I brought it with me, I was reading it in the car just outside to make sure I'd, I'd done my homework as, as best I could. I received a letter from Andrew on the 26th of November. No, that can't be right. Yeah, you, you, I don't know. It seems a long time. April, something like that. It was a long time ago. Uh, and the two things that jumped out of the paper uh, to me were a subject which I probably wouldn't have chosen myself and we'd like you to speak for 20 to 30 minutes. So I thought, well, there's a challenge. There's a subject that I wouldn't have chosen, and, but could I actually do a lecture in 20 minutes? And that's what I'm going to try to do. So I, I'm very much approaching this as an experiment, uh, which you're along for the ride for. Um, and I had to set myself um, a few uh, rules to do this. To deal with this issue, does God care? I've had to assume that all the speakers around me in the sessions have dealt with their subjects, which is not always necessarily the case, but I'm going to try to, and I'm going to assume that they have. So we're going to take it as read that I do believe in a God, that I do believe he put us here, that I'm here because God wanted me here for a purpose, that he gave us instructions in his word, that he sent a son because he cared enough about the world to ask his son to die, uh, and, and I believe in all the other things as well. But the bit we're going to zoom in on is that he cares. That he cares for me and you, and that, that I believe it. The, the first bit actually is a, is a hotly debated issue, and things happen from time to time in the news which cause people to, to state their opinion in, in very bold terms. So this is actually a, a newspaper heading from this week in America. You'll have seen, I'm sure, the, uh, the 14 who were killed in California. That was on um, Wednesday, I think. And this is the headlines from a New York paper on Thursday morning, um, where the, 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 the purpose of the article really was to point out that there were a number of Republican uh, politicians who were in the race for the presidency who, as far as this article was concerned, all they could say of any help was, we're praying for the victims. And so the headline was, well, that praying isn't really doing much, boys. When you looked into the article, it was far more political than that, and it, was a, a, uh, uh, it had to do with the fact that Republicans believe in gun control. Uh, but it, it is true that things happen in this world which cause a lot of people to say, I cannot possibly believe that there is a God, let alone that he cares. So th this is a, another um, front page from the same pa uh, paper, and you can see there that as far as death by guns in the, the United States, 87,423, and, and they're counting from, you may or may not remember, there was an incident where 20 children were shot dead in December 2012. And I have to say, I, I can, I can understand why that sort of occurrence would cause people to say, really, a God who cares and can let this sort of thing happen? And yet, if you look at what the Bible says consistently throughout all of the, the different stages, the different time periods, the different characters, God has sent his message in his word that he absolutely does care that he didn't just make the world, uh, it wasn't just an experiment and then he, he wandered off to do something else, somewhere else, but, but rather he, he is interested. So even now, God's message is that he, he watches what is going on and that he cares about it, and in fact that he will interact with those who say, and I care about him. So th this is a, a, a quote, a message which was received about 3,000 years ago by a king. Now there's a question, I don't see why I should do the work. Can anybody remember who was told for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to give strong support to those who commit their lives completely to him? There's a, there's a, a quandary. Now, he was an early king of Judah. He was a king who was very faithful, who, who acted like he believed God was watching him for nearly all of his life. But at the end, he, he struggled a bit and he asked another king to help him. And this was the message that God sent. Uh, and afterwards, he was going to have real trouble with his feet. 
Absolutely. So th this is the message that King Asa uh, was received. And, and my, my interest is not to test your knowledge of the kings of Jews' history, but rather to, to demonstrate that the message that God cares, and that he cares because he can see, because he's monitoring, is one that has consistently been sent. And, and it isn't just in the books regarding history. God has sent word through, through various people at different times. Uh, and here's a, a very a, a general uh, statement made by uh, the, one of the writers of the Proverbs. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. And, and as I said, it's a, a consistent message. Not that you have to do everything correctly for God to care. Because God also tells us that, that those who have interest in him, who, who try to do the right things, well, if things go wrong, and, and things go wrong in everyone's life from time to time, we make the wrong decisions, we, we have um, moments where we lose track and sight of what we're trying to do, well, God's message to us then it is that he, he delights in someone who tries to follow him, and if they fall... Well, all is not lost, that, that he will continue his interest in those who have sought him. And it isn't just in the present day either. Asa received a message which was very relevant to the challenges he was struggling with. And God sent messages in the poetic works to say that he cares whether we are in good times or bad. But for the future as well, God consistently has told us that his plan, his cares for the world, involve a future where, where things will be, well, different, where what he had intended when he created earth will come to pass. Surely I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for your harm, to give you a future with hope. And that, that's a statement and a promise he's made worldwide through all times. So people say, well, well, how can he let these things happen then? How could 14 people possi possibly lose their life through no fault of their own? And we have to try to make sense of that. Some people say, well, if we crowd God out of everyday life, then why should we expect him to care? He does, and he's looking for us to, to form a, a personal relationship with him. That, that's the second part really isn't it? We've established that God consistently says I care, he has done, he will do, but, but it is uh, something that can affect our, our, personal, uh, our personal lives. Uh, the, the reason I've got um, skydivers there is because that God's interest in, in us, in, in me and you, is four-dimensional. Okay, so Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul in the New Testament, was writing to people and he was trying to impress upon them the fact that God's care is so complete that it was everywhere they looked, whether they looked down or up or sideways or back to front. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, to know the love of Christ that surpasseth knowledge. So God doesn't just care about the nations of the world and the future of the world. He cares about you and me. And he cares about us when we're happy, when we're jumping out of planes, if you, if you wish to do such a thing, but also when we're sad. I suspect, actually, we're far more inclined to think about whether there is a God and whether he cares when life seems to be against us. And, and even in the depths of those sorts of feelings, God has sent messages consistently saying, you can rely upon me. It's amazing that you think a, a being who is capable of, of making the entire universe also sends a message to you that you can rely on him in your time of need. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you and for me. I, I heard a, 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 a brother speak uh, last Sunday, um, having lost his wife 
almost a year ago. It, it was very moving. It was a, an exhortation in one of our, our services. Uh, and he, he spoke of his pain in losing his wife uh, at the age of around 50. And I, I remember specifically him saying, I was angry. How could God give me something and then take it away? Of course, that reminds us that, that we, we care. There are people that we care about. There are things which happen to us which we care deeply about in our own lives. And yet God is saying that he can relate to that and that he's prepared to, to be there for us. The, the person in question said, I've had cards all around my house for the last almost 12 months which are all telling me that people care for what's happened for me, he said, and for the first six months I couldn't even read them. I was so angry about what had happened. Uh, and yet the wonderful thing about God is that he is consistent, so he will continue to care, even when there are times when we, we're not able to absorb that. We have to wait for, for the message to, well, to sink in. But when we're ready, and so is he. Uh, and so God will be with us and care for us in times of happiness, in times of desperate need and sorrow. And his promise is that he will restore, that he will bear us up. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And there you see from the prophets again. So once again, God's care is not just immediate. It is for the future where he's looking to, to deliver his plan with planet Earth. It's an amazing offer when you think about it. What, what, what God is saying is that however weary or worn down you are, however much you, you feel that, that life is, is dragging you down, I will be your battery pack. I will lift you up to something better. Of course, the, the challenge for each one of us is how do we believe that? How do we actually comprehend that, that a being so powerful and almighty and eternal who made everything and controls kingdoms and nations and, and battles, how do we how do we get our minds around the fact that he knows you? How can any being know all the hairs on all the heads in all the world? Of course, some of us, as we get older, maybe our wives might be able to count the hairs on our I'm not looking at anyone here. Uh, I, I feel it, the, the, it's coming to me. But, but how can it be? that God is so careful with what he's created that he's, he, he can make that statement uh, and we can believe it to be true. Well, there is another thing that God consistently tells us. He tells us he cares. He tells us he has a plan. He tells us that it is personal. But he also tells us throughout his word that if we look for him, then he's been careful to make sure that we will find him. And we might do that in various ways. He's provided us with ways to try to communicate with him and praise to tr ways to try to work these things out. And again, it's consistent. This is the, the Proverbs. I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently find me. This is the prophets. Again, think about this. This is... There aren't many promises in this world which are absolutely guaranteed. But this one is. God, actually, God says, you will find me. Of course, you, you've got to look perhaps hard. You know, we, we have to approach the matter seriously and ask ourselves some serious questions. But God assures us that if we do that, we will find him. You, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. And again, that's in the poets, it's in the prophets, it's in the New Testament as well. Ask and it will be given you, seek and you will find, knock and it will be opened unto you. For everyone who asks receives, 
the one who seeks find to the one who knocks it, it will be opened it's amazing isn't it that, that, that God would give such an offer and be prepared to, to back it up in, in each one of our individual lives how do we find him well we've, we've thought already a little bit or I mentioned prayer as one possible way of finding him that there is also of course God's word God's word specifically designed to help us believe all that he has said and when it says there these things are written that you may fight believe that Christ Jesus is Christ the son of God and that believing you may have life in his name that's not just us of course in the room today that's everyone that we might talk to about what we believe anybody that we might try to convey to it to explain to that God does care not just for us but for them too. Of course, it, it isn't easy. God has been pushed out of lots of areas of everybody's lives. We're, we're very busy, we're racing around doing all sorts of things. So, so how do we seek to find time to find him and to understand how much he cares? Well, there, there is God's word, which we believe is a vital part of finding him. I think there is also something else that we need to learn to do perhaps which we're not so very good at anymore we've seen this slide before but but notice the advice we have to wait upon the Lord now you know that's something we're really terrible at doing now you, you think of the speed with which we lead we lead life uh, you have super fast broadband uh, you have instant access everything we do in this life is designed to be immediate response and God says you may have to wait upon me to, to give a little bit of time to this to make sense of it and there are various ways that we can wait upon the Lord to 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 make sense of what he's telling us of the promises which he has delivered that the word wait actually which is used there wait upon the Lord that's the word in the Hebrew in the, the language in which it was originally penned and you can see there it has the, the meaning to look to tarry to wait well you know that but but literally the, the Hebrew the way that the original language worked it had the idea of a rope so a very thick rope just like that with different strands coming together and I think there are different ways that you and I can can wait for God uh, and um, get things in perspective uh, as we consider whether he exists and whether he cares there, there, there's one way um, it's one of my favorite sayings that but it's absolutely true it's one thing to proclaim a rope strong enough it is in another thing entirely to hang your weight upon it. it it's one thing for me to stand here for 20 minutes on a Sunday and tell you I believe God cares it is an entirely different thing for me to live my life in the coming week as if he cares and yet that is one way in which we can learn about him if we believe he is that he made all that is around us and that he's promised that he's interested that he's watching that he will not let us fall then sometimes we actually have to believe him and make decisions in our life as if that's true I, I can talk with some experience about this because I, I had a, uh, a rather um, challenging moment in my life this year uh, th this is a, um, a piece of equipment which allows you to go off the tops of buildings when you're looking at windows uh, and if you could see that that person there is looking extremely concerned there's a close-up of him the reason he's looking extremely concerned is that he's 22 stories up in a building and he's rather concerned about heights in general perhaps not the best thing for somebody who who's, uh, looks at windows in London a lot to, to be worried about but he, he is and the reason he's concerned is that that's the view if you were to turn around in that little window cleaners cradle so those of you who know London there's the, the London Eye Houses of Parliament are there St Paul's is there but what you really need to look at is that there, which is the cable which I was about to hang from uh, as I went over the side of this building. Those are the cables, you can't really see them. Uh, but I was very, very interested in them. Um, yeah, and so they hang all the way down here. And that was me. 
Now at the start of that day, I, uh, I prayed. I prayed to God that he would look after me in all of my concerns and my worries. And then when I got there, I thought, I can't do this. And then I thought, hang on a minute. I've just asked the creator of the entire world and universe to look after me. And I believe he exists, and I believe he cares for me. So why, why wouldn't I get in that cradle? Uh, and there I was for, for the day. In fact, I spent a few weeks there in the end. The cable is about that thin. Um, but God looked after me. And sometimes, you know, we do have to live our lives as if God does exist. Because we believe that he does and that he cares. Jesus was very um, focused on us looking for him and and searching for him i'm only going to take you to one bible passage this, this afternoon but it's in mark chapter 13 and, and it's words of the lord jesus the the son of god who who wanted people to to take time in their individual lives to think about the plan which he was involved in the reason he was here at all was because his father god cared God cared enough to send his son to the earth to save anyone who chose to take time to think about what was being offered. Why would God, God care so much to ask his son to, to lay down his life? And Jesus was, was intent on making sure people took the time to think about what he was involved in and the future plans which his, his, God, uh, his father had prepared Have a look Matthew uh, sorry Mark chapter 13 verse 31 Jesus cared greatly about the the future plans with which he was involved which his, his father had committed in the few years where he was walking on earth Mark chapter 13 verse 31 heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away of that day and that hour knoweth no man no not the angels which are in heaven neither the son but the father and there of course is another way of our waiting remember those that wait on the lord well we 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 have to make decisions that show we we accept god is and that he cares but also we have to well to look to the future and to consider what will happen when Jesus does return? Jesus says there he didn't know the time himself, but the fact that he would return was absolute. And yet Jesus continues and encourages everyone to, to take the time to consider whether that's something that they care about. Verse 33, Take ye heed, watch and pray. Ye know not when the time is, for the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you I say unto all, watch. And Jesus was so intent there on us um, watching out for him on being aware that the plan with which he in, was involved showed how much his father cared that, that he actually repeats the same idea three times in verse 33 he says be on guard so stay alert that that has the word stay awake so don't just let these sorts of challenges these questions get washed to the sidelines of your life if god cares enough to send his son why don't you care enough to ask, does that mean anything to me? Do I care? And Jesus says, well, if you do care, and he uses the same word three times in those verses, stay awake to my coming. Whatever else is going on in your life, keep conscious that the, the plan of my father is, is progressing, that I will return, I, I will come again. Of course, if we choose to, to care that God cares, that he sent this message consistently, that doesn't mean that our life will necessarily be easy. 
that we will be spared all the cares and worries of the world because now we care about God. In fact, sometimes it can be completely different. Sometimes we're told in God's word that God will challenge us in our lives to, to try and teach us things. That That is uh, my nightmare scenario. It didn't happen to me, fortunately. It happened to some window cleaners in America around the time that I was working in the cradle in London. You may have seen it on the news. They were there for 90 minutes until eventually... I suspect very carefully they walked from the, uh, the cradle in uh, through the building. Um, as I say, that, that didn't happen to me. Yet there was another video that somebody very kindly sent me of two Japanese, sorry, Chinese window cleaners swinging in the breeze at 92 stories up a, a tower in Shanghai. Um, just because God cares doesn't mean that our life will be carefree. But it does mean that we can be assured that somebody greater than all of us cares and is watching over us. D does that mean we can be careless? That we can take any sort of risk because God said, well, I'll, I'll catch you. Well, no. Our steps are made firm by the Lord when he delights in our way. Though we stumble, we shall not fall headlong. The Lord holds us by the hand. The Lord Jesus was tempted about what he should do in his life. God would have, have uh, saved him had he jumped from a, a tall tower for sure. But that's, that's not what God is asking us to do. He is asking us to believe him. And if the creator of the world says he cares and he will watch over you, well, it does put things in a different perspective, doesn't it? Not that I could ever do this. Somebody did point out to me that it doesn't matter if you fall out of a window cleaner's cradle at two stories or 102 stories, uh, the result will be similar. This chap is, is standing on a star which is on the top of a tower in America. Um, now, I will never, ever be able to do that. But, but you know... These are the, the sorts of, of things that people can do. And I do challenge myself sometimes to think, well, what can I do if I believe God cares for me? And he's told me that he won't let me down. The, the possibilities, that I suspect, are, well, different for every one of us. Of course, sometimes life can be utterly unpredictable. And when that happens... Well, what a comfort it can be to know that God has promised to be with us. This is back to my building in London, and you may see that the window there is, is a slightly different colour. The reason for that is that it, it's lost a piece of glass. Uh, and the reason I was hanging all over this building last year, or this year, was because we were making sure that no other windows fell from the building. That was the window that fell... Um, it's 300 kilos of glass. That, that shadow there is, um, is a bus stop sign. And there was a lady uh, waiting for a bus with two children under four um, just before that fell. And she looked up into the sky and she saw it detach. It had been there for about nine months. She was telling her children that she didn't approve of the architecture. Um, but she saw it and was able to run from it and survive it. Now, as I said, life is incredibly unpredictable. Why that happened to her, why she looked up, I, I don't know. I, I, I never met her. I, we, we met a lawyer, but we didn't meet her. But I do take great comfort, you know, from knowing that God cares for me and that whatever will happen in my life, whether I bring it upon myself or whether it come completely unexpected well he's told me he will look after me and be careful of me and he has plans for me and that puts the whole thing into a different perspective I'm not going to comment on our reading really more than to well to reflect for, for a moment on the wonder that God who made everything is willing to to be on our side uh, and the implications of that promise the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the stronghold of my life 
of whom shall I be afraid? Not that life isn't from time to time very scary, but then if we can continue to remind ourselves who is dealing with us because he cares for us and what he's capable of, well then perhaps life shouldn't be as scary as sometimes it appears. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him and he will act. And we can be sure of it. Of course the challenge is to do something about it. And that's not just for those who haven't thought about it at all yet. But actually it's about us who have and have decided what we think of it and what we are doing about it every day. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom, but only those, well, sorry, only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. And so daily we seek to remind ourselves that there is a God, that he does care. And we ask ourselves, what can we do about that while we wait for his plans to come to fruition?